I got texts that the cooler wasn't working. I had them send me pics and this is what they sent. So I had them bump up the thermostat to 70 until I arrived. Cool down to 33. Coils clear. This unit keeps freezing up on them. I think it's environmental. I think it's, look, it's in this hallway. It's hot out here. And I think this is just sucking the air in. My mentor told me once, long ago, if you find a walk-in cooler with a defrost timer on it, you found someone who hasn't found out how to solve the problem yet, right? You shouldn't need a defrost clock on a walk-in cooler, save a few very specific things. Really high humidity levels is one of them. I'm going to go up top and see, because I don't have a funny frost pattern. My coil is beautiful. Stand by. Okay, this makes me very happy. Because a few months ago, I gassed this up, and I couldn't find a leak at all. And she's still got a nice clear sight glass, which means I was correct and there's not a leak. Micro channel coils, not awesome. But yeah, I know it's freezing up. It's freezing up because it doesn't have a defrost, and where they're at, where it's at, they're in and out of it all day getting milk, and it's sucking in that hot back of house. I'm not even putting gauges on this. This is not short. I can tell you that the temperature is coming back at. So now the question becomes, do I put a defrost clock on this thing once a day, overnight, let's see what we got in here. Because what I could literally do is just, pardon, uh, just interrupt the leg of power to the whole system. We're not going to run, uh, or to the cooling system, right? We're not going to run the, oh yeah. So I can get even, I can get even simpler than that. Cause all I gotta do is interrupt the coil. So I'm just gonna interrupt one leg of the coil with the defrost clock and overnight for 45 minutes, I'll have it drop out and it'll never freeze up again. <coughs> Boy. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, don't waste a trip to the truck. I've got my micro channel aluminum safe cleaner in there. We got our defrost clock. I'm gonna grab some electrical wire and we'll roll. Alright, I wet the coil first just to get all the easy stuff. I'm supplying this. Again, these aren't terrible, but I gotta shut the unit down anyway to do my uh, defrost install. So, take the extra minute. Coming into fall and winter, so it's not like head pressure is gonna be the problem, but I know it's exciting watching me spray chemicals, but whatever, you can skip. All right, now this coil really didn't look that bad, but. So 
can see all the stuff coming out of it. Um, especially with this Viper stuff, you cannot rinse it enough. Just water, 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 water. Just flood the thing. All right, first things first, kind of what we talked about the other day. I need a jumper between one and two. Even though I'm not gonna hook anything up to the defrost circuit, I am hooking it completely up to the cooling circuit, just in the name of simplicity. So I bent a jumper between one and two. We're gonna run our line power in. So I'm actually gonna run it into one since I've got them jumped either way, it doesn't matter, right? And then I'm gonna run one leg of power is coming straight to the contactor. Let me go different. I'm running N straight into the control power, okay? And then straight into uh, to one and two. And then my board is gonna be powered. And so these are my lines in. These are what's going straight into the bottom of the clock, okay? Hope I have enough wire there. Then out of, you know what I'll do, this one that's short, I'll cut this down here and I'll take it to one side of the contactor. And then this one that'll run in, the other one I'll run out of four to the other side. That way, yeah, let me put it physically together and the actions will make more sense than my babbling. All right, I tried to make this make more sense by using a color coding game. One leg of power, which I'm gonna denote with white. That is my, <laughs> I'm gonna say N, it's not neutral because it's high voltage, they're both. So we're gonna call it leg one and leg two. So leg one comes in and splits, runs up to the end terminal of the clock, which is half of powering it. The other runs over here into one line side of my contactor bringing 120 volts chill in there waiting the line two comes into the clock on number one which feeds my power now i have a live clock and then number two passes the signal on to number four which comes out and to my other line side so in theory when i put this back in that should kick in. This should light up and that should probably start running. Yes. We have green light. We have slurping coil. Hang on. So with these micro channels, they really don't like even a little bit of water. So any bit you can help them. Go for it. Here's what's gonna be funny about this. When I flip this into a defrost, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that. And so when I dial that to a defrost, the compressor and the fan should stop, but the contactor's still gonna be pulled in, I think, because all I'm doing is interrupting the power feeding everything. Oh, no, it did kick out. Gotcha. So when we go into defrost, that shuts down. Now, I do want to make sure that downstairs, everything's still running, which it certainly should be. But just to be positive, positive, stranger things. Uh, I'm going to leave this in a defrost for the moment. I'm going to go downstairs, make sure the fan's still running. A beautiful thing. Fan's still running. I actually knew it would be because they tied in the fan to the light. But just had to confirm. Okay, so let's go set it up proper upstairs. I don't know where the video went, but I set a 45 minute defrost every night at 1 a.m. So the compressor will drop out and the fans will just run. She's satisfying at 33 and rolling back up to 38. Uh, I would like to replace that wonderful mechanical thermostat that's been failing all over the world on me 
and just put in one of those Rambo digitals, but enough damage done for the day.